Hi friends! Gosh, it has been a little bit of uh, time since I posted a YouTube video. That was not my intention, but it also wasn't my intention to have to move out of my house twice within the past like four weeks due to various plumbing and pipe related issues. Um, that was fun. Moving my stuff in and out was just real fun. You know, moving house is going to be really interesting with a chronic illness. I, I truly can't wait. <sighs> Anyway, today I am back and I'm in a different filming spot because I honestly just couldn't sit downstairs anymore and have people walking down the street and staring directly in at me with my little tripod and my little camera uh, filming my video. I just couldn't deal with that. So we're trying a different spot today. Yeah, this background is not mine. I've tried to add my things. The mushrooms are mine. So I've tried to add a little like, you know, festive decoration. I love this thing best purchase of the year. Maybe. So I'm going to try my best to resume my semi-regular upload schedule here. Hopefully no more pipes will come in and disrupt my upload schedule. Um, and today this video is going to be completely off the cuff, another one that's completely unscripted. So I realized a few weeks ago that I actually haven't been out since I became a full-time mobility aid user by myself in any kind of big or like momentous way. The only thing I've really done is like walked around my neighborhood to go on like a leisurely stroll. But since I became a full-time um, walking stick user for like those bigger days out, I have not been out by myself. And whenever I'm with um, a friend, my partner, my mum, or whoever, um, I will always take my stick with me now. And I think that having them there with me when I'm trying to kind of juggle my walking stick and other stuff makes it a lot easier. Whereas being out on my own is something that I've never actually done with a walking stick since I became a full-time user. COVID took care of that. This wasn't something that I did intentionally. I didn't intend to just stop going out by myself. I think after that started to ease a little bit, having the option to go and get on the bus because I don't drive, um, no nothing appealing about that. The, the I, Public transport is my least favorite thing. I had enough of getting on buses to uni and getting a seat then when I was struggling a little bit but not using a mobility aid was difficult enough. The idea of having to do it now and actually like really needing that seat and being by myself and having to really advocate for myself, it does just nothing appealing about getting on a bus, okay? There is nothing appealing about it. So I decided that I was gonna have a go at going out into town by myself with my walking stick for the first time in well, pretty much ever. In addition to the fact that I was now having to deal with kind of being a full-time mobility aid user out in public, there was also the idea of the social anxiety aspect of it. Maybe I'll make a video on this separately, um, but I have um, social anxiety that like fluctuates quite a bit. If I'm with someone else, it's much better. If I'm on my own, it's more difficult as you could probably imagine. And I kind of knew in the back of my head um, that the, the longer I went without going out by myself like that, the worse the anxiety was going to get, especially about around like being a mobility aid user on my own in public, it was only going to get worse. So I decided to push myself and give it a try. As it happens, I did not have to get the bus because honestly, I think a good 75 to 80 percent of the reason that I'd been putting this off and not really wanting to actually do it was because I have no desire to get on public transport. Um, in the UK, it's just bad. Um, I know a lot of places, other cities I've been to um, who have, um, I mean to be fair, even other cities within the UK who have underground you know, transport systems or even their buses are just so much better than where I live. It's not the best. Maybe they've gotten better, I don't know, but I, I just didn't want to have to deal with the whole trying to get a seat on the bus, getting on with a walking stick, having someone like fuss over me or like ask if I need to get the ramp out every time I get on and off the bus. Just stuff like that I did not want to have to deal with. Not because I'm like scared of it, it's just a whole load of additional stress. Luckily in this situation, my partner was actually going into town for a job interview and I was going into town with him for this, the purposes of this little experiment. So let's talk about my actual experiences with going out into the city by myself as a mobility aid user. So I had my pink cane with me on this particular day. It's the most comfortable one that I have. Also, it matched my outfit. <laughs> it's very important. You guys know that's important to me, right? So I said goodbye to my partner and I went off into the city by myself. And honestly, I could kind of feel myself like putting on that armor. 
<coughs> masking. <coughs> Suddenly I was much more aware of the fact that I was by myself and that that was kind of it now. I had to just deal with this. I was there, off I went. Now people do tend to stare at me and honestly for most of my life I've dealt with this because I kind of dressed weird or in like different fashion or fashion that just happens to people kind of like look at me. I, I don't like it. Obviously that just means it's more important to me to dress in a way that makes me feel happy and comfortable. So I'm kind of used to being stared at for the way I dress and at this point I just kind of like it's kind of like water off a duck's back. I, I don't really notice that. But since I have started using my mobility aid um, on like a full-time basis going out and about I definitely have noticed people staring at my stick and some people like they are just at my walking stick and they're clearly staring at that like they don't make an attempt to kind of look at anything else it's just like laser focus on the walking stick um, some of them are really nice and say lovely comments and lovely things about my walking stick um, some people say weird things or ask strange questions about my walking stick maybe I'll make a video on that at some point that's fun but yeah most of them just like if they're gonna stare they double down on it they stare but you know I just kind of keep going I get by I'd put on my uh, my little armor I'd put my shoulders back and I was walking around and just kind of enjoying looking in different stores um, I went into quite a quiet store at first and just kind of got myself used to being like wow I'm out on my own you know there's no one here I'm not oh god I can't pass Kira my stick if I need to no I'm just kidding so yeah I'm walking around and um, I'm having a good time I think I took some of this footage just because I was so like proud of myself for being out and about on my own felt weird but at the same time I almost kind of immediately like snapped back into pre-2020 pre-mobility user Gina because I know my town I know my city so the first thing that happened is I went into a shop and I used the escalator or if you're in America elevator yeah sorry yeah escalator elevator ah yeah so I hopped onto well I didn't hop I mean can you imagine that's probably the kind of stupid thing I would do but I got on to the escalator to go up to the second floor of a shop um, this is something that I do I, I probably shouldn't do this to be honest I probably should get the lift but the lift always takes a lot longer and if I'm just going up one flight especially getting on the escalator is doable for me as long as I'm careful so you know what can I say you know your gals are badass so anyway I went to the first floor looked around there and then I had to get downstairs and I went back to where the escalators were and I realized that this particular shop and I don't know why they do this it has an up escalator but next to that there are only stairs to go down but there's just one escalator in there and this is an old store like they could have replaced this a long time ago but literally you can only go up the escalator you have to go down the stairs or down in the lift so I was like okay stairs not doing that turned around and went off to find the lift and um, I actually have a bit of a fear of lifts getting stuck in lifts in particular I don't know why I think there was one episode of Fireman Sam as a kid where someone got stuck in the lift and I think it kind of like traumatized me as a child it was very tense for a, for a children's episode and I was like well lifts are evil you know Sam said don't get in the lift there'll be a fire and it'll get stuck and it will be just the worst so don't really like getting in lifts especially don't really like getting in them on my own but again this is the life of a mobility aid user I had to get in the lift certain lifts are worse than others this one was just in a busy store it's not too bad it's fine got in the lift went down <laughs> took some footage of myself in a lift by myself. I also went into this store to use the toilets and I went and used the accessible toilets because there was just no way with all of my stuff that I could navigate the regular toilet. It's hard enough as it is, to be honest. It was kind of weird. I didn't get footage of this. I don't think out of the wind. There was like a massive window just opposite the toilet. And like, yes, there were currently no buildings there with, that's my cat, by the way. Hi Mittens, say hi to people. Currently there was no building opposite this like massive reg unfrosted window but like if they chose to do that you would just be able to see directly into the person on the toilet in the accessible toilet so that was interesting um, so yeah I went to the accessible toilet went down in the lift always going well I then went to a bookshop um, to go and get some food and have a little bit of a break in the cafe and also because books in this case I actually went up in the lift it's quite a big lift again it's a busy store it's not too much of an issue for me I did have a little bit of a panic getting in it because it was kind of a juddery lift which initially makes me think oh god panic 
I am gonna die in here, but I didn't. Also, does anybody else see the like Schindler's Lifts logo and think of Schindler's List? I make that joke every time we're in the lift. Kieran probably is just like, Gina, stop. I, I don't know why you do this. Can you please? Anyway, so my next stop was to go and get some food. Now, initially, and this was always a problem for me even before I was a mobility aid user, I would panic about getting a seat when I was by myself because this cafe gets pretty busy around lunchtime, which is when I was there. Luckily, I calculated it and thought, you know what? I think I can definitely get a seat here. So I stood in line thinking about what I wanted. And then I thought, oh God, it is a self it's not really self-service, but you take your tray, your own tray, over to the table, just a regular cafe, and I was like, oh, uh, I can't do that anymore. I'm going to have to actually ask for help. So this is something that normally the person that I'd be with, whether it was a family member, friend, Karen, most of the time, of course, um, they would just take the tray for us and I would just go and sit down. Um, sometimes to give me a little bit of an extra break when I'm with Karen, he'll just say, like, what do you want? I'll order it. You go and sit down, have a little bit of an extra rest. Um, find somewhere to hook your stick that it's not gonna, you know, fall on the floor and like clatter down on the wooden floor six times during lunch. And I suddenly realized that like, it was just me. I had to figure this out. And I was like, okay, I have to actually ask the employee if he wouldn't mind bringing my tray over to my table. Now, again, this is a scenario where I could go into the ins and outs of it um, to do with social anxiety and all that kind of thing. But that kind of, for me, is a bit of a panic because it lies outside of what I expect this social interaction is gonna be like. So I think he saw me with my stick. I'm not 100% sure, but basically once he put the stuff down on the, the, the tray, he kind of wandered off. So he, he didn't actually offer to, to initially like help the person with the walking stick to the table. Again, maybe he didn't see it. I'd be surprised if he didn't, but there you go. Anyway, I said to him, oh, excuse me, um, would you mind just bringing my tray over to my table for me and kind of gestured to my walking stick? And he kind of looked at me and was like, no, <laughs> yeah, sure, just kidding. I personally didn't appreciate this. <laughs> Again, I, I'd love to like reanalyze this in a different way, but I've recently been like researching a lot into the um, ASD um, autism spectrum um, because I am like 99.9% .9 sure I'm on it. Um, especially after like a recent related diagnosis. It was not, when someone says something that you don't expect like that, it kind of knocks you for six. And I, my brain just kind of stopped for a second and I was like, wait, what, what? And I don't think I kind of smiled or laughed. I just was like, oh, okay. <laughs> and then like wandered off to a table and he took the tray for me and put it down. So yeah, really, you don't have to make jokes when people ask for, especially when people are asking, for particular um, help with a, like disability related stuff, just help them. Don't make a big deal out of it. Don't make a joke out of it. Just be like, yeah, of course, and do the thing, please. <laughs> I'm asking on behalf of everyone. So yeah, then I sat with my little lunch um, and that was really nostalgic for me because it's the same cafe that I used to go to nearly every day when I was at university. I would go there for lunch and just waste time basically between classes. I had like two hours between some of my lectures and that was very, that was very fun. It was very comforting. Once I was like seated, I was all okay. Um, but yeah, having to ask for that like special assistance and that additional requirement and think on my feet like that was something that I was not really used to. Um, and I'm proud of myself for doing it because um, I could have just struggled to be honest, but um, I thought, no, like what, what am I supposed to do in this situation? Ask for help from the staff. They should be able to accommodate you without any issue, <laughs> maybe any jokes, that would be good. So the last place I went on my little trip was to the library. Now, when I go to the library, I will, I'll just pick books up, just, just pick them up and take them. Not really much of a thought to um, how many, how heavy they are, anything like that. And I was discussing this with my partner on the way home, but I basically said like, you know, I love the library, but if I could have like a little Matilda style cart to help me pull the books with my walking stick, that would be great because there really isn't anything I know of that you can do about this when you're disabled. If you are in a similar situation to me and there is something that is like the done thing in this situation, please let me know because I'm usually struggling holding all of my books in one hand, my stick in the other, walking around, go to a different section, put the books down, you know, rest my stick against something maybe. Um, it's kind of a difficult thing to navigate, like having all of those books. I really wish they had like a little wheelie trolley or something. I think it would be really, really helpful for people with similar disabilities to me. 
Luckily I managed, I'm kind of used to going to the library at least, even if I'm not used to going into the city by myself. Yeah, always love the library, gotta love the library. Would like some accommodations though, <laughs> that would be great. Maybe I can suggest it, I don't know. What am I to do? Being an advocate is difficult. And then I waited in the library and did some reading and eventually my partner came out of um, his interview and we left and that was the end of my day. But overall, honestly, I felt it was quite surprising how quickly I got back into feeling like, okay, this is like a normal situation, like, you know, pre-2020 where I would be out and about by myself, going to these same places, eating at the same places. Apparently I like routine. It felt quite natural quite quickly. It was only when I had to deal with specific new things, new information, new considerations, that I had to kind of stop myself and be like, okay, wait, I have to like go and find the lift. I have to ask for help with this. I have to go and find, um, you know, the accessible toilets and, and do all of this by myself. When there's someone else with me, I just tend to feel more comfortable overall anyway. And I think taking disability out of it, that is generally the case with me overall when I'm out and about in social situations. But it is important to me that I feel able and confident to go out by myself with my walking stick. But of course with a disability, it's very hard to plan ahead. Planning is very difficult, but it's very necessary. Of course, there are certain situations that I didn't experience in my trip on this particular day. Like for example, going into the changing room, how would I navigate that? Is there help that's gonna be offered to me automatically? Do I have to ask for specific accommodations? There's just a lot more things that aren't always apparent when you have a disability or a mobility aid specifically, when you're out and about on your own. And I think it can be quite daunting, but I also want to say from someone who was quite nervous about it, it's actually not that bad, unless you have like a specific experience where everything was awful, which I can completely understand and I'm not trying to negate that whatsoever. With a little bit of like forward planning, it's actually not that scary just to be out and about with a mobility aid in a general sense. Now I've had days where I've been with my partner or a family member or a friend where I've been asked weird stuff about my stick, people have made weird comments, made me feel uncomfortable, stuff like that. And of course that sucks and there's always a risk that's gonna happen. But I think in terms of the difference with you being on your own, it just makes you feel a lot more capable and independent. And I think that can only be a good thing for someone with a disability. So will I be doing it um, on a more regular basis? Maybe I, so basically my partner just got a job in the city, um, which basically means that it will be more feasible for me to maybe like meet him for lunch or like if I'm going somewhere already or like going to the library, I can kind of meet him in town. So I imagine that will probably feature a lot more in the future. But I do genuinely think that now I've done it once, I'm not gonna be falling over myself to go into the city uh, by myself, just because, um, oh my gosh, there's like a hair. <sighs> the one thing, now I know I can do it, it makes me feel better just to say that I've done it. That's kind of enough for me. And the other thing is there's really not a lot to do in my city that I personally would be interested in doing. Something like going to an event alone would be way more stressful for me than just going into the city alone. And I'm. Overall, I'm really proud of myself and I'm really, really glad that I did this. If you too are, you know, you feel that you are out of practice with doing something or you now have a mobility aid that you didn't have before and you think, oh, you know, can I do this alone? I'd recommend if you're really scared, maybe just taking it in small, maybe just like 15 minute chunks. So for example, go, go out with, um, you know, a partner or a friend or a family member or whoever, go into the city or wherever it is with them and then say to them, right, I'm gonna go off into like somewhere that you know that you're familiar with, particularly with like the kinds of accommodations and where stuff is. Say, I'm gonna go off here for 15 minutes, half an hour, one hour, and then I'll meet you back here. Kind of split off that little bit of independent time within a larger trip. And then if something does happen and you think, okay, I need help here, you can always call them and say, hey, I need you to come um, to where I am because I need help. It's definitely doable, at least for someone in, in my current situation, and I would encourage you to give it a try. You can do it, even if it is a little bit difficult. I hope this video has been interesting, and maybe it's got you thinking about your own situation or a situation or a scenario that you've been in where things have been made more difficult because you've been alone um, with a mobility aid. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Thanks so much for watching. Um, please like it and subscribe because it really helps this little growing channel I really, really appreciate all of you for being here. Thank you so much, guys. I'll see you in the next one. Bye, loving spoons. Mwah.